The battle for those two Georgia Senate seats has been heated and often ugly in recent weeks. High stakes as Democrats and Republicans vie for control of the Senate. So our Steve Osinsami, who's based in Atlanta, gives us a closer look now at what's been driving the race and whether it will drive voters to the polls. While the political circus that has surrounded the November election became more avoidable for many Americans a week after they voted, it continues to grind on for voters in Georgia who will choose two U.S. Senators on Tuesday. Tomorrow is Georgia's day. And in the process, decide whether Republicans or Democrats control the U.S. Senate. Everything is at stake. Everything is at stake. The political attack ads from both sides are to this very moment inescapable in Georgia. That's their goal. Total radical control to bring horrific change to America. On television, on the radio, on every phone in the state. If you want some of Senator Perdue's time, you gotta pay for it. Even to get to the new Taylor Swift video on YouTube, you have to first sit through a campaign ad if you're watching from a screen in Georgia. So many here are sick of it. All the fighting and name calling. On this side, Senator David Perdue, who's self-quarantining tonight after being exposed to the coronavirus. He's called his opponent, Democrat John Ossoff, a communist and a job killer who he says plans to bankrupt Medicare. The choice in this race is between going to a socialist state that they're trying to describe and freedom. Ossoff has called Purdue a coward and a crook, saying that Purdue argued against the science during the COVID crisis, but then traded COVID-related stocks. Purdue keeps saying that he's done nothing wrong. It's not just that you're a crook, Senator. It's that you're attacking the health of the people that you represent. In the other race, Senator Kelly Loeffler, one of the owners of the WNBA Atlanta Dream and one of the wealthiest lawmakers in American history, who says that her opponent, Reverend Raphael Warnock, is out of touch with Georgia voters because he's, quote, a radical liberal. In January, I have one of the most radical opponents on the Democrat ticket in the whole country, and Raphael Warnock. College students who were watching this debate were playing drinking games with how many times she used the phrase. Radical liberal, radical liberal, radical liberal Raphael Warnock. You've just heard radical liberal Raphael Warnock lie again. And she said it 13 times in that one evening. Oh, she's continued uh, to misrepresent my record. Uh, she's lied not only on me, but on Jesus. Loeffler's campaign has taken clips from the Reverend's sermons and used them to say that he's anti-police, anti-military, and anti-Semitic. Nobody can serve God and the military. Raphael Warnock attacks our military. Warnock is the pastor of the church that was led by Dr. Martin Luther King, and he fought back with video of Loeffler standing at the pulpit in the same church, clearly unoffended by the pastor sitting nearby, a preacher who she now repeatedly describes as the most radical and dangerous candidate in America. The attacks have lit a fire under black voters who feel that Loeffler has crossed a line. A group of black pastors wrote her an open letter telling her to stop, writing that we see your attacks against Warnock as a broader attack against the black church and faith traditions for which we stand. The tenor has brought racists out of hiding, who've now flooded the phone lines of this historic black church with racist messages and recordings. That son of a said Trump supporters are going to be beaten so bad they can't walk. That ain't a man of God. That's an asshole. You're so evil. Evil, 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 evil. The evilest pastor I've ever seen. Georgia has a runoff system where if a candidate for office doesn't win 50% of the vote, the top two candidates face off again in a runoff election. If it weren't for the runoff, Warnock would have won in November and Ossoff would have lost. Polls put the race as even tonight and more than 3 million Georgians have already voted, which is fewer than the number who voted in November, but a far larger turnout than what's typical for a runoff election. What's also telling, turnout in early voting and the mail-in vote so far appears higher in the blue counties in and around Atlanta, where most of the state's residents live. Georgia patriots must show up and vote. The incredibly large shadow over this election is coming from this man, the president of the United States, who has been refusing to accept the truth that he lost the election in Georgia in November by a slim margin of nearly 12,000 votes. This is a state with a Republican governor 
And the Secretary of State who runs the elections in Georgia is not only a Republican, but a Trump supporter who was endorsed for office by the president himself. Now the president can't stand the guy because he's refusing to overturn the election results over allegations of widespread voter fraud with no evidence. State investigations and dozens of court cases haven't found any reason or evidence to cast any doubt on the election results in Georgia. Well, Mr. President, the challenge that you have is the data you have is wrong. And now there's a recorded phone call where the president can be heard trying to pressure Georgia's secretary of state into finding votes for the president after the election has already been certified. All I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more than we have, because we won the state. The president has also talked trash about Georgia's Republican lieutenant governor, who has defended the election here. He says the president's phone call was unfortunate. Do you at all worry that it might hurt their chances tomorrow in any way? It doesn't help them. Uh, I can't think of a single scenario where that phone call uh, for 62 plus minutes made any sort of difference in, in getting David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler reelected. Senators Perdue and Loeffler were put in a terrible position, side with the president or with state Republicans who refused to cave to the pressure. They chose the president. And I'm still shocked that a member of the Republican Party would tape a sitting president and then leak that it's disgusting in my view. President-elect Joe Biden also came to Georgia, and right now in the eyes of state Democrats, he walks on water. His victory here was something that President Obama was unable to achieve twice, turning Georgia blue. I know these campaign, this campaign has been exhausting. It's been intense. It's been nonstop. But I'm asking you to give everything you've got one more day. One more day. And that one more day is not hyperbole. You can change America. It is not lost on Georgia voters in any way that the rest of the country is watching this election closely and that this decision is significant. Every day in the mail, voters here are getting handwritten reminders from voters on other sides of the country. It's an overwhelming amount of attention, and people here can't wait till it ends. For ABC News Live, I'm Steve Osinsabi in Atlanta. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.